so sad. There was a woman killed by a grizzly bear. Yeah, not more than 100 miles from our campsite. New details are emerging about a horrific bear attack that killed a Northern California woman. Happened while that woman was camping in the remote town of Ovando in Montana. Welcome back to Mountain Beaches. I'm Norm. And I'm Kim. And we're living our dream to discover new adventures. We are because, as you know, tomorrow is never promised. So it's important to live for today. And we wanted to share with you that in this video, we wanted to share tips on how to stay safe while RVing in bear country. Yeah, this video is not about when backcountry hikers, you know, if you're off in the wilderness in a tent, that kind of thing. This is for RV campers. Right. So while you're out RVing or maybe even out on a, an adventure during the day, a hike or whatever, that's what this video is about. We're going to share with you tips for you to stay bear aware and bear safe. Yes, and there's a bird chirping up here who's <laughs> just really liking this story. He wants to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost, we have to be respectful of the bears and realize that this is their home. Yeah. We're just visitors here. And, and you know, maybe we don't realize where bears are located. We think of bears in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, that kind of thing. Yeah, those are more grizzly bears, but there's black bears around that, those areas too. But the East Coast, uh, eastern part of the, the U.S., I should say, has a lot of black bears as well. Right. And so we're not just talking about grizzly bear. We're talking about bear in, in, bears general. in general. Bears can become a problem usually under four circumstances. The first is when they're defending their food source. Right, so they may have a, a animal kill, a deer or whatever that they're they're eating. They're defending that. Another one is when maybe they're injured in some way, shape, or form. They've gotten hurt or they've a hunter has shot them and, and injured, whatever it is. Whatever it is. They're dangerous at that point. Right. Another one is those mama bears and their cubs. You know how it is. You know how it is if you are defending your kids, it's a mama bear defending her cubs. I think that's one of the worst situations. Absolutely. And then the fourth one is caused by people like you and me, campers, who make bears realize that humans are our food source. Right. Not that they're going to eat us, but that we supply food. We have food, we leave it out, we've got coolers that we leave out, and they... They become aware of that and associate food with humans. And bears are smart. They remember. Very smart. Right. So we're going to split this into two categories. One, what to do to stay safe in your campground, in your RV, in that kind of situation. And second? The second one is when you're out on an adventure, you know, a hike, a day adventure, something like that. So let's get into those right now. Okay. So what can you and I as campers do to keep bear out of our campsites and keep us safe and the bear safe? Right. So we met Bill with the Montana Wildlife Foundation and he is a bear expert and he shared with us several tips that we're going to share now with you. Some of those, which I thought was really cute, he talked about smellies. What are smellies and why are bears attracted to smellies? So first off, bears have an incredible sense of smell. It is seven times better than a hound dog. Imagine if you can believe, that. Yeah, yeah. If you can believe yeah. that. Yeah. So that gives you an idea. They can smell from miles away. And if you leave smellies out, they'll come find them. They'll come find them. So some of the things we learned, which was really a good learning experience for me, smellies, gum, tic-tac. Um, toothpaste, um, yeah, lotion. Of course, all of the things you might think of normally, you know, regular foods, but these were things yeah. I was like, what? Right, <laughs> yeah. Some other things Dental were, floss. Dental floss. I know, can you imagine that? Some of the things, though, one of the things that was really interesting to me was your dishwater. So if you're doing dishes outside and you've got this soapy dishwater full of, you know, spaghetti stuff or whatever is in your dishwater, that is yummy soup for bears. We used to do our dishes outside all the time and we would just leave that out or maybe we'd dump it into the fire pit. That's a huge no-no and the wrong thing to do right. in bear country. Right. That's going to just bring a bear like a magnet. So you need to either dump that down your sink in your RV 
or if if you're in an area that has a pit toilet, something like that, you can dump it down the pit toilet. Yeah, any bathroom in the in the RV park, if they have one, you can right. dump it down that. Or if you don't have that, you need to dump those kinds of things at least 100 yards away from your campsite. So, okay, so. guys, you know how much 100 yards is. That's a full football field away. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to say. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> what else would be smellies? Your garbage. We used to just hang our garbage outside yeah, in a black bag. Tie it up to a tree. Yeah, and just leave it there. Well, that is just asking for the bears to come and visit. Another thing is, who likes to set up their black stone griddle right outside of their yeah, RV? Yeah, you set and it up and you got it all nicely configured it, and you just leave it there, just, right? That's a no-no. That's the, a big no-no in bear country. The bear can smell the, the food that you've been cooking on that griddle, even if you clean it, yes. they can still sense it and smell it. So it's not just the Blackstone, but any little barbecue griddle, grill that you might have portable, those things need to be stowed away in your uh, RV some way or in your truck or whatever you have. Right. I think that covers the smelly part of it. But what happens if, say, a mama bear just decides to come visit your campground or a papa babies, bear <laughs> or papa bears you know what do you do do you get out your camera and get as close as you can to get a really nice close-up we photo? have seen so many youtube videos recently of people maybe in a national park or just campers in general that see a bear and think they're in the zoo and they try and get as close as they can they sneak up on it to get that national geographic photo mm -hmm. Absolute worst thing to do. Absolute. You don't know when that bear is going to turn and uh, attack you because if it's a mama bear, she's protecting her cubs. Go in your RV. Go in your tow vehicle. Get away from them. Watch them from a safe place. Take your pictures through the window in your RV. Do not be that person who gets as close as they can. Otherwise, you might not be around to tell about it. So if you're like us, and you know that we like to go out hiking often and be out in nature, what do you do if you come across a bear in that situation? Well, first of all, you need to be very aware, again, like we said earlier, that you are in bear country, and so there is a chance that you might come across a bear. You want to be hiking and making noise. We, we tend to like to hike and be quiet because we're out in nature and we like to hear nature, but you need to be loud talking with loud voices wearing maybe a cowbell that's clanking along you want those bear to hear you and skedaddle yep. before you come across them <laughs> sometimes you can surprise a bear and you don't really want to do that another thing you should be doing while you're hiking is your head needs to be on a swivel you're being aware you're being, and i kind of tend to not be aware i can be in my own head kind of <laughs> <laughs> That's her downfall, <laughs> her weakness. And, you know, carry your bear spray. That's another thing, bear spray. Did you realize bear spray is more effective in being a deterrent than even a gun? Yeah. It's something that sounds counterintuitive, but it really is true unless you are an extremely good marksman and have the right weapon with you with the, you know, big enough caliber bullet. And you're really quick on the draw. Right. You're probably not going to be effective with the gun. You're, you're going to miss. Your hand's going to be shaking. That, that bear can be running at you at a speed of 30, 35 miles an hour. These bears are huge, but They're they are fast. fast. So bear spray is the better deterrent uh, for another reason. It doesn't kill the bear. And we don't right. want to kill the bear. We don't want to kill the bears. We're, we're guests in their home. But going back to the bear spray part, we learned, I thought it was really interesting, that when you use bear spray, you want to shoot low at first because if the bear is really charging you, he's charging you on all fours and he's going to be low. And you want to do a Z kind of pattern so you set up that fog there. Bear spray has been used to deter bears at close range in a number of situations. And let's talk about bear spray and how you travel with it on your hike. Okay. 
Yeah. Don't put it in your backpack. You don't have time to take your backpack off and get it out. Don't put it in that side pocket, even in the mesh ones. It's difficult in a moment of panic. It's difficult to reach right. back, find what you're looking for, that bear spray. Put your bear spray on your belt in front right. or on a lanyard or a holster that is in front where you can get right at it if needed. Okay, so it's much better to talk about bear spray when we actually have it to show you. And we have been notoriously bad about keeping bear spray with us. It's usually in the trailer. We're gonna be better. We're gonna be better. In, in fact, this one hasn't even been taken out of the package until I just did took it out right now. Yeah, and but you need to look. We bought this a while ago and they do have expiration dates on they it. They do. Expiration date right down here. But this is the safety up here. You're gonna put your finger in here. You're gonna pull back on this. This is gonna come off and then you're gonna be able to depress the trigger the trigger there you yeah. go so you're going to pull this off and then you're going to do it <laughs> and then you're going to push down on the trigger